Hello and welcome to Chris Course Channel Plays Far Cry 3. Today we're going to be talking about additive manufacturing, which is better known as 3D printing. Uh, I'm going to be running through the most common techniques and the pros and cons of each and addressing the potential, well, the current and potential future uses of the technology. Uh, but first, we're going to decide what we're doing in this video. Uh, where are we? We're here. There's a camp there. Why not? Let's go and try and take that camp down. That can only go well. Uh, I'm going to run over because it's fairly close. Uh, but yes, the most common method of 3D printing at the moment is called fused, dep fused deposition modelling, which basically involves threading a plastic filament into a machine that melts it, and then it extrudes the melted filament down in layers, and that's what makes up your model. Um, as it's very common at the moment because it is cheap, basically. The machines are fairly cheap. You can get them for a few hundred pounds or a few more hundred dollars. Um, the materials, again, are very cheap. They're just normal plastics that are extruded into a filament and stuck into a roll, so they aren't expensive. And it's extremely common for prototyping, and we're going completely the wrong way. It's extremely common for prototyping and for hobbyists as well. Uh, projects like the RepRap project, which is an open source 3D printer. Um, if you're into you know, technology and things like that, it's a good thing to look into, actually. Uh, do I have another weapon? Oh, I remember I unlocked a bow at the end of the last thing, didn't I? But I don't currently have it with... Oh, shit. Run away, tiger. <laughs> That's a good excuse to go back and get my bow. There we are. We're going to do that now. Uh, but yes, the RepRap project is something well worth looking into if you've got a few hundred pounds you want to spend on a new hobby because you can buy yourself a little manufacturing plant for your house. Um, you know, it's an educational thing to do. You can produce any small parts you need as long as they don't need any massive... Um, mechanical strength. Uh, specials, I believe, is where the bow is. I want to equip that after putting a sight on it. There we are. Equip bow. Equip. Um, I have a new slot. Excellent. What I do want to do is get rid of the pistol and give myself a sniper rifle as well. So I own that one. Uh, unfortunately, I can't put a silencer on it, but okay, fine. Equip in place of the rubbishy pistol. There we go. Now we're sl we are slightly better armed. I do need to buy some ammo. Whoops. Uh, there we go. can just about afford all of that stuff. Right, let's go back out to that outpost and see what we can do. Uh, right, the second most common technique is stereolithography, which basically uses an ultraviolet laser to cure a resin, a liquid resin. Um, the advantages of it are you can get better resolution, generally speaking, than you can with um, fused deposition modelling. But it's a lot more expensive because you have to buy you know, fairly specialist, specialist equipment. Oh, that guy's car's broken. That's unhelpful. I was hoping to steal it. I have to buy fairly specialised equipment for it. And the actual resin is much more expensive than the standard filament that you use. Hi guys, I'm going to kick you out of your car. Sorry. No, I'm not going to help you with your car. I'm going to steal this one. Because I have places to go, and you don't. Sorry. Bye. <laughs> there we are. Right, uh, but yeah, stereolithography is mostly for industrial use at the moment. Another breakdown. These cars aren't very reliable. Um, mostly for industrial use because of the cost. But it's starting to become a bit cheaper, and there are projects on Kickstarter and things that are looking to produce much more affordable consumer-grade stereolithographic printers. Um, there have been a few hurdles with patents, I think. I think a company is trying to claim they have patents over them and that's pulled a project and all that, but um, hopefully that resolves itself. I'd quite like to see 3D printing remain fairly open so that people can get into it as a hobby. Because, oh, we're okay, we're okay, cars are meant to do that. <laughs> um, but yeah, the third, um, it's not really a different method per se. How are we over here? There's a bridge over there, I think. No, no, I swear I saw a bridge. Did I see a bridge? I did not see a bridge. Uh, okay. Oh, oh, oh dear, oh dear. Oh shit. <laughs> get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. Run. We're fine, we're fine. Right, um, but yeah, most 3D printing you see is done in plastics, but it is possible to do it in metals and ceramics as well. Um, it's very expensive and very difficult to do, so it's quite rare, except in prototype forms in um, industry and that kind of thing. Basically, you have a matrix of a plastic binder that's filled with a metal or ceramic powder, and you print it as normal. It's normally um, 
the extrusion printing method, I think. And then once it's printed, you stick it in a basically an oven and fire it, which burns off the plastic and fuses the material you actually wanted to print together. There we are. We'll just steal him. Obviously, the advantage of that is you can have metal or ceramic parts, which are far more durable than the plastic. But at the moment, the cost makes it really impractical, so it's very rarely done. And you know, again, I'm hopeful it'll become a bit cheaper, or a bit cheaper in the future. But for now, it's not viable at all. Uh, someone nearly saw me there. Okay, okay, we're going up here, getting a nice high angle. There's a radio tower up there. Have I captured that? Oh, yes, that's the one I just captured. We're going over there for the camp. Okay. Oh, oh dear. Oh. Yeah, I'm I'm very good at this driving th driving thing. Um, yeah, moving on to the practical applications of the 3D printing. Uh, oh, let's be stealthy. Moving on to the practical applications. Um, mostly at the moment in proto. Oh, that's bad news. It's okay. We're going to hope it doesn't attack. They're in prototyping and small production runs for companies who can't afford to, you know, invest in large-scale production techniques like vacuum forming or injection moulding. Okay, let's have a quick look around this camp. Tag as many people as possible and really hope the cassowary things stay away. I don't know how you pronounce them, actually. Are, are they cassowaries? Who knows? Pronunciation's not really my strong point. Oh dear, did someone give you the clap? How unfortunate for you. Um... I don't really have much sympathy for you, I'm afraid. Will you go away? I'm not bothering you. Oh, hello. Uh, they just got mauled. Well, that's that's useful. If whatever that is could take out the entire camp, I'd be oh so grateful to it. No, apparently not. Fine. There is a tiger. <laughs> that's excellent. You see anyone else? I don't. Just those ones. Oh crap, he's nearly seen me. Uh, actually, I might need a bigger gun, because the tiger might be about to win. No. No, it didn't. Right, give me the bow. Let's take this guy out quickly. Oh shit, there's two of them. Hi. I think I win. Excellent. Uh, right, yes, practical applications are prototypes and small company runs. Uh, in the future it's probably going to be much more common and used to produce odds and sods in local shops and possibly even in people's homes for the more technically minded people. Um, you, know, you can imagine the usefulness if for some reason you've managed to chuck all your forks in the bin or something. I say that because I have actually done that in the past. That was um, that was a masterstroke by me. Uh, you could 3D print yourself a spork or something, you know, just as an example. Or if a part of your light breaks, you can 3D, 3D print yourself a new stand for it and that kind of thing, you know, just for general repairs around the home and it'd be very useful. Um, I don't think we actually used much ammo for that. It was mostly the tiger that took care of it for us, which was nice. But yeah, it's not going to replace conventional manufacture or anything. You have people saying, oh, everything will be 3D printed in the next 10 years. That's rubbish. No, it, it won't be. <laughs> it just won't. Um, simply because it's slow. It's a really slow method of manufacture. So it's not going to replace absolutely everything. Um, and it's silly to expect it to. But it does have a place in manufacture, you know, moving some things over to consumers to take the... You know, basically, it's not really efficient shipping specialist components, as say, if part of something you own breaks, it's much more efficient just to print it at your house than have it shipped over from where it's been stored in a warehouse somewhere, because storage costs money and all that. So yes, it's definitely useful for that kind of thing. Um, oh, oh, oh dear, I <laughs> need to be concentrating a bit more. Oh, crap, 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 crap. Uh, Q, 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 Q. No, don't, don't die, don't die. Okay. Note to self, do not drive the car over a fire. <laughs> Oh, I can be a spanner sometimes. Um, yeah, moving on to more recent uses. In the last few days, uh, what inspired me to do this one was an article about a man who had a cancerous tumour growing under his cheek, and he had an emergency operation to remove it, and it was you know, coming on the size of a tennis ball, and afterwards, basically, he had a hole in his head. They had to remove his eye, his cheek and cheekbone, and most of his jaw, and there was a physical opening into his nose and mouth from his cheek. It was literally a hole in his head that he's had for several years, and they 3D printed a replacement of it. 
you know, they scanned the area with a 3D laser scanner effectively, scanned his skull and reconstructed what it should look like from that data, and then 3D printed it using nylon. And he's now got this replacement thing filling in this hole in his face, and for the first time in several years, he can now eat. Uh, beforehand, he had he had to eat through tubes that went directly into his stomach, because, as I said, he couldn't use his mouth, because there was a massive gaping hole in it. And now he can eat, he can drink, he can breathe properly, he can speak properly. It's been a massive change to his life, as well as the obvious, you know, cosmetic improvements of it. And it gives an example of, you know, the potential this technology has for... Just one. Yeah, we're nearly at the camp. The potential this technology has for things other than just prototyping. I mean, the medical implications are huge. If you can make custom components for each person who, each person who needs something like that, the potential improvements to quality of life and indeed the reductions in cost, if it's done on a larger scale, are really, really uh, exciting in terms of their scope and their potential. Uh, obviously, there are a few negative uses of 3D printing as well. Through shooting the cage will free the animal. I didn't actually see the caged animal. Interesting. Uh, there are a few negative potential uses of 3D printing as well. For example, there are currently groups of people trying to 3D print guns and that kind of thing, but that's entirely inevitable. That's just going to happen. Um, it's a manufacturing technique. People are always going to apply it to everything. It's not a problem unique to 3D printing. And people who argue that that's a a negative point to 3D printing are simply incorrect. That's a negative point to humanity. You know, that's going to happen with everything. We can't blame the 3D printers for it. So yeah, it's an extremely promising complementary technique. Oh, there's another guy. Wow, there are a lot of people in this camp. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to take them all out without being annihilated. Uh, let's try and draw his attention. Here we are. Good man. Go over there so I can shoot you through the face. Also, where are the alarm posts? Ooh, there's one over there. Are there any more? I don't think there are. No. Yes, you heard wrong. Go away. Now, what I'm going to do is shoot at that alarm. Oh, I'm not good enough with a bow to hit that from here. Um. Oh, we also can't breathe in with a bow, apparently. Um. Okay. And... I don't know how far away it is. There. Oh, shot. Oh, they, those people are about to be... Shit, I did not mean to do that. Uh, we're in trouble. Okay, we're just going to back away now and leave them to calm down for a few minutes. Um, but yeah, it's a promising complementary technique for large-scale manufacture. So it's not going to replace things like injection molding and vacuum forming simply because it's not viable on that kind of large scale because it's a slow manufacturing technique. But for smaller components and short runs and things, it's certainly going to be a part of the future of manufacturing. It's not something that should be dismissed, and it's an exciting possibility for the future. Uh, that's all I've got to say on the topic, so for the last few minutes of this video, I'm just going to get shot to death by all of these people while I attempt to kill them. <laughs> okay, there are dogs over there. Let's release them to cause a bit of carnage. There we are. Then while they're distracting people, we'll try and snipe a few buggers. That guy should be in sort of trouble. Right, there we are. Um, oh, well, that was distinctly ineffective. Yeah, we're we're in a bit of shit now. Hi. Ooh, that guy's got Molotovs. Crap. Crap, crap, crap. Molotovs are not good. Run away. Oh, no, really? Someone came in from outside the camp? Oh, I don't have enough health for this. <laughs> I've only got two health bars because we're early in the game. Uh, duck. Oh, no, don't duck into the Molotov, stupid human. Oh, great. Reload. <laughs> oh... This has gone about as well as I expected it to, actually. Oh. Apparently I was on fire. Yeah. Um, hmm. Yeah, don't mind me. Just dying. Right, we'll give that one more go and then call it a day. Oh, it's daytime. Oh, we're 800 metres away. We won't give that another day. Another go, rather. We will end the video here and I will see you next time. Farewell.